And we are joined in the studio today by a very interesting special guest. Yes, Calvin Ominde, who a little over 12 years ago was given a vision to set up and establish a village school to serve the poor and empower local villages. This is called the Art Quest Education Centre, a school which is growing and training the next generation of leaders in Kenya. And we have the special privilege of being joined by Calvin himself this morning. Good morning, Calvin. Good morning. So, Calvin, first and foremost, what brings you to New Zealand, my friend? Yeah, I've come to New Zealand to be able to create awareness so that we are able to have many of those children sponsored because mm -hmm. we have quite a number of students who are not able to access education. And then to, to be able to see if we're able to raise enough funding to be able to have a permanent wing for uh, the students because they are staying in the temporal classes. So you're very passionate about education. Yes, I yes, understand I am. you are a professor in yeah. physics as well. So when did this passion for education all begin? I was brought up in the village, uh, 400 kilometers away from where I live. I currently live in the city of Nairobi together with my wife. Uh, I, I teach physics at the university and my wife teaches um, has a PhD in mechanical engineering. So both of us Whoa. teach um, uh, at the university. So we've accessed quality education, really struggling from the village all the way to, to, to the city. And I don't want any other child to go through the struggles. I had to go walking eight kilometers to school, having one meal a day. Wow. I feel that the blessings that God has given us, we should be able to use them to transform the lives of others mm. so that they can get an equal opportunity to get out of poverty, but also to um, enjoy the blessing of the Lord. Mm. So then tell us about the ArtQuest Education Centre in particular. When did you decide more than just having this passion for education that you needed to create your own education center because that is a whole extra level of mm. complexity and challenge and uh, I'm sure much more rewarding as well. But when, when did you decide this is the moment to start on this education center? Many people ask me, how did you begin the school? I, For me, this is a journey of faith. Mm. Um, when I was employed in the university in 2008, I began, 2007, I began a feeding program for eight children. I actually gave my mother $120 um, New Zealand dollars to be able to start a feeding program for eight children. Then later I thought maybe they should not just eat lunch. Um, let me have someone who can train them in the afternoon before they go home. At the end of that year, they were 26. Wow. <laughs> the following, by the end of 2009, they were 52. By the end of 2010, they were um, 102. So it kept increasing. There's a time I had over 360 schools, so 360 students, and then I realized, oh, I did poor planning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because yes, God has blessed us to have very good performance for mm. those children. So mm. when they are called to very good schools, we had now to reduce them to be able to support others that go into the national schools and into the university. Wow. Well, I'm really curious as to how it all began, in particular your faith journey. Like, how did you personally come to faith and have this understanding that God was there for you and he had a plan for you? Yes. I, we, we really struggled at home. We really struggled. We were the poorest in our entire neighborhood. And I struggled with a lot of medical conditions. Um, I sat for my year eight after a major surgery and um, even my, my form four. But in my second year of high school, uh, God spoke to me because that's the year my parents thought I would not be able to move on. And I was healed. And yes, that's, that's when I got really born again and really believed in Christ healing. And I think that transformed really my life. Mm -hmm. That was not the end of issues. Um, when I went to the university, I still really lacked. I used to miss a lot of exams because of lack of fees. But um, in second year at my university, I had this great revelation that God is with me. And mm -hmm. I committed to him that I would be able to transform. If he was going to help me to finish my first degree, then I will commit myself to helping someone else mm -hmm. whom I don't know to the level of uh, the highest level of education I will have reached. Mm -hmm. And amazing what you ask God for. I finished as the best student in my department and in my faculty. 
And that's how I was employed. Wow. And what's remarkable too is, I mean, I know you say the words very easily about it being a faith journey. And I think mm -hmm. for a lot of people, when we decide to trust God with something, we have this picture of yes. how that's going to look. And, oh, okay, well, God's going to bring everything together and it's going to be, you know, plain sailing. But there's always ups and downs and yes, then challenges and, and moments of doubts and things. So yes. is there a moment in particular that comes to mind for you where, you know, maybe you weren't sure how it was all going to work out and, and, and God came through for you, perhaps yes. with the school or in your own life personally? My most remarkable part is in my second year at the university because I didn't have fees and I knew definitely I was going to miss this exam the following day because this lecturer was so strict not allowing any student who didn't, who had not cleared fees. So I prayed to God and told God, if it is your will for me to be at the university, then you'll allow me to sit for that exam. But if it is not your will, then that lecturer will chase me out of the exam. And I went the following day and sat as the first student. And that lecturer came and strangely, he gave me the exam paper and moved to the student behind me and asked him for the exam card. And that student told him, but you didn't ask Calvin. He came back to me and asked me, Calvin, where's your card? I told him I don't have. And he told me, okay, all of you, you know, all of you sit for the exam. That was God. For him, wow. it was... Wow. Um, allowing me but that's exactly what i'd asked god the previous day that mm. was a reassurance that in this journey god is with me but that doesn't imply that that was the last exam i missed i missed several other exams there were still other issues but god was with me throughout and mm. he gave me excellence mm. in my university degree that's incredible and so you would like to see other children have the same opportunities that you had and thrive through ARC Education Quest. So just quickly, what are some of the major needs that you have at present with what you're trying to do? Yes, we really would desire to have many students sponsored. We have a lot of students who are quite poor. They walk a long distance. They don't have fees at all at all. And um, we, I am here to create awareness for people to be able to support them. Then two, our buildings, we have been using temporal buildings and the buildings have been eaten by the termites. So the school is actually coming out, uh, coming down. Wow. So I am here to request, you know, Christians to just to journey with us to be able to build 12 more classes for, for these children. Yes. Mm. And so if people want to get involved in this, I know you have a website up right now, which is arcquest.org.nz. Is that yes. correct? Yes, that's okay. Okay. And if people go along there, they're able to, to sign up. And what, what ways can they support? Is it like a, a regular, like a weekly or monthly thing or a one-off gift? What are you looking for there? We They can do either a weekly gift or monthly gift. One of the challenge I have, because we are now the top school amongst the five top schools out of 150 in our county, I'm also losing our teachers because I pay my teachers. We have a staff of 13 teachers and 13 support staff, and we are only paying them between $72 and $220. Mm. That is 20% of what the government is paying. So if people are able to sign up and support these teachers and the children, we are able to raise their salaries just to about 500 of what the government is paying. Is that per month? Per month, yes, that's wow. per month. Okay. All right. So well, look, the opportunity then is before all of you listening right now, maybe this stirs you. And, um, you know, as Calvin's mentioned, uh, that, that vision for what God can do through education and through your generosity, you can head along to arcquest.org.nz arcquest.org.nz. Kelvin, do you have anything else you'd like to say to our listeners before we go this morning? I am sincerely grateful. When I left my country, I had a revelation that, you know, the Lord will speak to me. I am really grateful. There's quite a lot of need everywhere. So really choosing to support us is such an honor. We are forever grateful. May the grace of the Lord bless you as you help me really achieve my vision in the earth. Thank you, Calvin. And if you'd like to support the work and check out what they do, you can go to artquest.org.nz. Ah, amazing. I hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. Yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn your notifications on so you don't miss the next video. We'll see you in the next one.